pierced the marrow of the bones, and it pierced their heart. All right, now listen. Verse 34, Then stood up there one of the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. And by the way, Gamaliel, uh, Paul was uh, taught and scholared under him in the law. Uh, a doctor of the law. This guy knew the law back and forth, okay? Now, had a reputation among all the people and commanded to be put the apostles forth for a little space. And Gamaliel said unto them, 35, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose Theodius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain and all, and as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to nothing. After this rose up a guy named Judas of Galilee in those days of the taxing and drew away much people with him, and he also perished. And with all, even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. Okay? Now, you got to understand something. Verse 38. And now I say to you, refrain from these men. Let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. Listen to me. But if it be of Yahweh, you can't overthrow it less happily. You be found even to fight against Yahweh. I got to stop right there. I got to stop. I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit all over me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I'm telling you right now, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Even Gamaliel was warning them that if this so-called preaching in the name of Yeshua comes to nothing, you got, you're good to go. And so are, and so are your descendants. But, but, listen, but if it keeps going and continues, this was 2,000 years ago there about this guy speaking. If it keeps going and continues, you can't overthrow it. I've come by here to tell you something. There ain't going to be no overthrowing the word of Yahweh. There ain't going to be no overthrowing the hallelujah, the king of kings. There ain't going to be no overthrowing the preaching of the word. It shall come to pass. It shall continue its work that Yahweh set forth. It shall continue its work that the Messiah set forth through his true disciples. It will come to pass. Hallelujah. Even unto the end of this age, it shall come to pass. Glory be to the Most High, because let me run something by you, friends. When they come against you, when they come against me, when they come against the true children of the living Creator following Yeshua, they're not coming against us. They're not talking about us. They are coming against Yahweh, and they shall be brought to nothing. Their destruction is nigh. It shall come to pass. It shall not delay. It will not tarry in the time and in the hands of Yahweh. He shall bring forth their destruction, and the mighty King of Kings will bring them to nothing. Amen. I'm just telling you what Gamaliel said. I'm just excited about it. Verse 40. And to him they agreed. When they had called the apostles, they beat them, commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Yeshua and let them go. They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. i got to tell you something. i got to be plain with you. There are people that Yahweh has ordained to suffer for his name in this time and in the not-so-distant future. That's what just kills me in my heart about this pre-tribulation rapture. you got all these American modern-day Christians that they're going to fly away, yet they've accomplished nothing. Don't even hold a candle to, to Peter and John, and yet they're going to fly away? And they're observing thousands upon thousands of man-made laws that are contrary to what Yeshua said? And yet they're going to be counted to fly away as the bride? It bothers me. It bothers me. In verse 42, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Yeshua HaMashiach. Chapter 6. And in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of Yahweh and serve tables. That's what I keep telling you. 
there are many honorable men that will receive the same reward. When Jesus hired them in the vineyard, he hired them in the first hour, he hired some in the eleventh hour and all in between. They all got the same amount. That is a that is a literal parable of people that come and begin to serve the Creator by way of Yeshua. You understand? And whether he hired them, meaning to labor, whether he, he it was it was him hiring Peter and John, or whether it's him hiring Billy and Cindy and Bob two thousand years later, is still the same reward in terms of entrance into the eternal kingdom, in terms of eternal life, in terms of ruling and reigning with the Messiah. And the disciples said, what's the deal? What's the deal? What are we supposed to do here? He said, fine, listen to this. Look, 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 look. Verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look, yet among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over the business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. I was just telling my wife earlier, and I'm going to say this to you, ladies and gentlemen, in all humility. You and I, ever who I'm speaking to that hears this, that are believers that serve Him, we can't turn back now. Lest everything that is good about us, that has been accomplished by the Messiah, comes to nothing. We got to give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word, whatever that may be that you do in your in your ministry to Him. Not all are called to preach, but all are called to serve Him. Verse five, and the whole say, in the saying pleased the whole multitude. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Pro- Procotrus, Nacre, and Timon, and Prometheus, Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch whom they set before the apostles, they laid their hands and prayed for them and and laid their hands on them. And the word of Yahweh increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient in faith. Now, I've got 552. Y'all want me to quit or keep going and get the the part of Stephen out? I'll finish up to Acts 8. I'll I'll do the part of Stephen today and I will finish up 7 through 18 tomorrow. I'll finish up Stephen today because it's 552 and I will finish up Acts 7 to 18 tomorrow. Okay? I'm going to finish up Stephen today. Now, what I'm getting at is I'll tell you what we'll do. If you can be here, fine. If you can't, I understand it. But if you'll let the people know. No, I'll finish it tomorrow. I promise. I won't never get through today. It'll take me two more hours today. We'll leave a note in the chat room if you want to put it, Cindy, while I'm at a break here. Get a drink of water. We'll leave a note in the chat room. Put it three or four times, Bob and Cindy, if you want to. At uh, at 4 o'clock tomorrow. If you can be here, fine. At 4 o'clock tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow. I'm doing it. Tomorrow. Because if I don't do it tomorrow, I'll get sidetracked. Now, let's go ahead. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, finishing up. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. There rose certain of the synagogue, which called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Syrians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Sicily and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake, because it wasn't him speaking, it was the Holy Spirit, you see. And they suborned men, which said, We have found, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against Yahweh. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Yeshua of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs of Moses delivered. Notice the word customs for tomorrow. That's right. That's right. Notice there is a difference. There is a difference 
between the customs and the law. Oh, notice Stephen. Stephen, Stephen understood the law of, of, of Yahweh. But Stephen began to ignore the customs of the Pharisees because he had uh, been taught, if he didn't hear it himself, he had been taught by the disciples that Yeshua had already told the Pharisees and the sects and the Sadducees that they have nullified the word of Yahweh through their customs and traditions. You see? Aha! <clears throat> Verse 15, And all that sat in the council, looking steadfast on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? <clears throat> now here we go. This is Stephen speaking. And he said, Men and brethren and fathers, hearken. The Yahweh Elohim of glory had appeared unto our fathers Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Cherim. He said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Cherim. And from thence when his father was dead, he removed him into the land where now you dwell. He gave him none inheritance in it, not so much as to set his foot on it, Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And Yahweh spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange... And by the way, by the way, Stephen is quoting out of Genesis, Exodus, Nehemiah, and I'll stop there for a minute. Yeah, he's quoting, yeah, absolutely, Genesis, Exodus, Nehemiah, you name it. But yet, we don't need that today, says the so-called modern church. We don't need it today. But yet, Stephen found it, that it was needed, and therefore it was recorded in the book of Acts that Genesis and, and Exodus and, and Nehemiah, all this was important or he would not have been saying it. You hear me? Jeremy? Verse 7, And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, saith Yahweh. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. There is Exodus again. And he gave them the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy and sold Joseph into Egypt. But Yahweh was with him and delivered him out of what? And delivered him what? out of his afflictions, and gave him, what? Favor and wisdom, even in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Genesis 42. Obviously, Genesis still mattered to Stephen. Okay? Now, there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was no corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first, and the, at the second time... Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known to Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died in our fathers, and were carried over into Shechem, laid in the sepulcher of Abraham bought, for a sum of money the sum of Emor, the father of Shechem. But when the time... Mm, listen to me. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which Yahweh had sworn unto Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Again I say, when the time, I feel the Holy Ghost, when the time of the, Trump, the promise drew nigh, another king arose that knew not Joseph. And the same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our fathers so that they cast out their children to the end they might not live. I'm going to stop right there and preach for a minute. But, okay, and then we'll close it out to the more. And when the time of the promise drew nigh, mm -hmm, there arose one that knew not mm -hmm, Joseph. Knew not Yahweh, knew not Joseph. Mm -hmm. And the same self dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end that they might not live. I'm going to run something by you. It was about to get time that they were to be out of bondage. It was about to get time for the promised land. 